Cheers, guys. Epix 911, welcome to the Elitist Geek VR News for August 21st. Let's jump right into it. Uh, one of the viewers of this channel, Neil Riley, sent me a few links dealing with a new 3-in-1 cable that is apparently going out to HTC Vive customers. Customers who are either ordering it through the accessory page for Vive or are in the midst of an RMA, right? So like a warranty replacement. Now, it appears to have just been the last week or so, because if you go back to Reddits from about two weeks ago, you still see people complaining about stock issues on that cable. It looks like now that what those stock issues basically were, were old inventory being phased out and new inventory being phased in. Now, I don't yet know if this impacts me in Canada, but I can assure you if it does, I'm going to be ordering one of these. But essentially, look, it's no secret that the Vive has a very thick cable. Like, compare that to the Rift, right? And you can see it's, it's night and day, right? The Vive cable also has some unique features. Some are good, some are not so good. Coiling is not one of the good ones. This thing has the ability to coil and create tension in the coil because of the design that sees it do all kinds of weird wonky stuff like elevate itself up the, off the floor. I have almost tripped because it's not laying flat, right? Because the way it can kind of tension itself. Very unique to the Vive cable. So anyways, this newer Rift-like cable, and you got to give them kudos for taking a page out of their competitors' books, and this is where competition... This is just a perfect example of where competition is a good thing, right? So yesterday I talked about how Oculus was being a little bit coy still because they didn't want to be seen as I told you so, right, in terms of room space VR. Well... Contrast that to HTC Vive, who quietly basically adopted what amounts to Rift's cable design, right? The much thinner profiled cable. Now, I'm hoping this thing is just as long as the old one. I love the length of that cable for many reasons. Uh, I know a, a few of you have sent me links for a ceiling mounted cable. I haven't done that because I have an awesome ability to butcher stuff, like horribly. That looks like a great arcade cabinet behind me. A lot of you have commented on it, and I would agree, but it's also the third that I built. The first two didn't look near as good. The first one looked absolutely horrible. I call it my Franken cabinet. And the second one was experimental. I was getting a little bit better, but it wasn't until my third that I think I kind of nailed it. So I haven't done a lot of ceiling work, and I have a very nice ceiling in this man cave that I'm sure I could ruin easily by trying to do some kind of crazy ceiling mount system. If I had a beam or something that went across, like a hardwood beam, different story. I don't, so I'm reluctant. But what I have been doing is still working on the design for my kind of VR, PVC VR arena. And I still have an idea for using PVC pipe to elevate overhead and feed the cable through. So. If this thing is in fact available to Canadians as well, and I'm gonna double check just to make sure, I'll let you guys know for any Canadians watching or Europeans, I'll try to find out exactly you know, where this thing is available. Let's just hope it's the same length because that's part of what I do like about the Vives cable design. So anyways, have a look, the link's below. And just really quick uh, in terms of the Reddit, it's hilarious because the Reddit that Neil linked it goes through a couple of discussions. And one guy basically says, look, I have tons of cable. It's like any other cable, right? And then one guy says, well, no, the Vive is kind of unique in terms of what I mentioned earlier, where its design lends to this tension that is able to elevate the coils up off the ground, right? Well, one of the guys responded back to the guy said that said a cable is a cable. And he basically said, um, out of all those cables that you own, how many, besides the Vive, do you attach to the back of your head and then proceed to spin in circles with? And that just busted my gut. I thought that statement was pure win. As far as I was concerned, that was the end of the Reddit. Um, full stop right there. Close the thing. You win. Go home. Because it's so true. When you... And what I really noticed that is in a game like Wrath of the Fire God that I showed a few days ago, that is a game that really makes use of room space VR, right? That floating platform that you have, you got to bounce all over it. 
and the way that current cable is designed it is not a good thing it's basically an accident waiting to happen for anybody like me who's not the most nimble on their feet right so gonna find out if it is available here for Canadians I will order it for sure now the next two news pieces I'm gonna kind of roll them together they have to do with augmented reality and I've stated many times on this channel I think AR and VR are two separate entities yes there's overlap but the fate of one does not determine the fate of the other and I thought these articles did a good uh, they showcase that really really well I will have the links below but take a look the first one in particular right really emphasizes the strengths of the Microsoft HoloLens as I see it when I saw this thing exampled immediately my thought was look it'll be okay for games and we'll touch on that in a second but where I think it's going to excel is real life occupational scenarios right and if you look at the link that I'm going to include there's a couple of short videos on there one of them is a guy who's got basically the green gardening thumb that I do which is pretty much to say non-existent right and he's looking at one of his hedge shrubs saying look this thing would is supposed to look circular it would look so much better mine's growing all over the place so he puts this augmented sphere over top of it trims the hedge around that sphere removes the sphere and you're left with a sphere shrub basically it looking like it should look in real life and you can't tell it from real life it looks that fantastic like I could see this thing being used for landscaping like that golf course design um, construction like the ability to superimpose blueprints designs over top of reality is just it can't be understated how awesome and revolutionary that's going to be for businesses that do exactly the types of things that I just mentioned right but then this other link which also touched on that was actually one of the execs for Dungeons and Dragons and Dungeons and Dragons is in my opinion for me personally and I apologize if it's not the same for you or you have different feelings about it that's your right okay but for me D&D has been just an important thing in my life in terms of gaming right every bit as much important as computers have uh, pen and paper role-playing games really allowed me to escape a pretty crappy life <laughs> and uh, this is my original player's handbook and I only show this just for anybody who plays D&D they're going to instantly recognize this as being the original original this is the original first editions player's handbook you can see silver duct tape and black electrician's tape over that i.e this thing's seen better days right but everything about this game uh, about this book was pure win and I'm going to have this probably until my last days on the planet what does that have to do with AR and VR epics? Well, that's what I'm going to get into. So what the D&D exec says is where he sees AR really excelling, and it got me excited and, and agreeing with him, is tabletop gaming, right? Whether that's board games, and trust me, I love getting buddies together to do some good board games, and I'm not talking Monopoly or Life. I'm talking games, real fantasy, sci-fi, awesome board games, right? pen and paper role-playing games same thing imagine you're having a campaign and instead of having to draw it on graph paper or with a dry erase marker on a board that you lay out on the table you can do combat with holographic player characters and monsters with a holographic representation of the dungeon or the world that you're exploring you and your buddies all see this on when you look at the table right you could take an ordinary boring coffee table and literally transform it into a game environment that is where I see augmented reality excelling screw Pokemon Go right and I mean that lovingly right not my cup of tea but I don't think that is even just a drop in the bucket on what AR is going to be able to do for that type of gaming so very specific very different right I don't think virtual reality is as well suited to stuff like that you can make an awesome board game experience in VR but mixing real life and virtual reality in AR again is very unique to AR and it's awesomely 
awesomely suited for exactly that. Now, the next story has to do with AMD. And AMD is a company that I flipped back and forth in terms of my support quite a few times. I was a little bitter when they originally bought ATI, ATI being a Canadian company out of uh, Eastern Canada. And you know what, since then I got over that, I've gone back and I've supported them over the years, always swapping back and forth between NVIDIA and AMD. One of the things that I love about the GPU manufacturers is they really get what the technology can deliver, right? And what I mean by that is CPUs are basically logic driven. They can perform a specific set of things, instructions. They're very flexible and dynamic for that. But they don't excel at doing games, throwing polys up on the screen. GPUs do. And GPUs over the years have gotten amazingly powerful. Case in point, stuff like Bitcoin, the types of calculations, GPUs are very well suited for that. And AMD more so than NVIDIA, or at least they've tended to be over the years, right, for Bitcoin stuff. And all that processing power is very specific, like I said, to rendering. But there's things that can be done very well using that, like physics calculations. And that's why NVIDIA, you know, in terms of their physics stuff, the VR stuff, they've got very specific uses for that GPU. Well, AMD now has one of their own that they're experimenting with. And it's basically called True Audio Next. And it's based off of their ray tracing software, which kind of makes sense if you understand how ray tracing works and it was what was used for Wolfenstein 3D back in the day. Well, I guess you could say pseudo ray tracing, right? But the way sound waves bump in real life is very much well suited to what a GPU can do. So it's one I'm gonna be watching really closely because we've talked about that and where that ties into virtual reality is it's, look, we're seeing all this development with HMD manufacturers. There's a dime a dozen right now, right? We are seeing all kinds of peripheral guys out of the woodwork, and I'll be touching on that a little bit later. We haven't seen as much for audio, but it's coming, and this is an example of that because that's probably my one big consistent complaint, regardless of which platform I'm using, it's the audio. This is the first time in a long time that it's been noticeable to me how far audio is lagging behind the technology I'm using, right? Because we had a time where, look, sound blasters ruled everybody's rig. At one point, buying a sound card was a thing, right? Then integrated audio got so good that, you know, via DSP, digital sound processing, and that sort of thing, that a lot of people didn't end up buying or needing sound cards anymore. They could do 7.1 completely through their integrated motherboard solution. Well, now we're getting to a point where that might come around full circle and audio is getting its place in the sun again. It's getting attention because what we have right now is woefully inept at selling audio in VR, right? Can't wait to see what they're capable of. And what I like about AMD solutions is that they tend to be open source, like their versions of their VR works, etc., cetera, uh, are, you know, code examples you can see on GitHub because of that open nature. Hopefully that'll be the case with this true audio technology, but I'll be following it and I will report if that is the case or if it ends up not being the case, but definitely some awesome potential uh, and make use of all that horsepower that these modern GPUs have. So that is awesome. The next story, um, like I said, ties into that a little bit and it's the VR peripherals market, right? And we are seeing literally all kinds of accessories. Haptic gloves, I think I've reported on about three or four different types, body suits, motion devices like the Omni directional treadmill style devices, right? There's all kinds of frictionless ones, all kinds of different things. And look, it sounds cheesy as hell to say, but ultimately right out of um, Highlander, there can be only one. And that's mostly true. There can usually be space for two, sometimes three. The point being, a lot of these guys are gonna fall to the wayside get gobbled up by other companies, and it's gonna take 
one, two, three years maybe until we start seeing some standards for the movement peripherals, for the haptic feedback peripherals. Until then, we're going to see a lot of experimentation and it's going to be a lot of one-off designs. Or like some of these haptic gloves that I've seen, the ability for the modding community to take over and via plugins add what the game developers haven't. And that's where I see the most promise for a lot of these peripherals because look, they're not gonna have the mass market that the devices they were designed for have because A, a lot of them didn't kind of go with that original bundle, right? Um, but they've also got the, just the realistic challenges of trying to enter a new marketplace and there's going to be winners, there's going to be losers. So I'm going to continue to report on that. You know, it's times like this where I wish I had a time machine. I could literally pop in, take a peek two, three years from now, right? But hey, part of the fun is watching it unfold before us. And that is what we get to sit back. Well, a lot of us don't have to sit back because we can actually enjoy it. But anyways, live through and watch unfold. All right, guys, that's it for this news video. Cheers as always, and we will see you on the flip side.